So hi Trish, thanks for joining us. You've actually um, lost over 70 kilos so far on your Unzip the Fat Suit journey. Uh, how much exactly have you lost? 76 kilos, I think. Mm, that sounds very nice, doesn't it? 76 kilos, it sort of rolls off the tongue a little bit. 77 actually. <laughs> One kilo away from being half my weight. Okay, so what was your starting weight? About 156. Okay, and now you are? 79. That's very exciting. Yeah. How does it feel to be nearly half your body weight? Just amazing. Now, when we first started, it's been about a year and a half. Yeah. yeah? So when we first started, there was a little bit of resistance to using some of the, the tools and the techniques that we talked about because there were some major cravings and addictions that you had attached to sugary foods and carbohydrate type, high carb type foods. Yeah. Things like ice cream, cakes, um, lollies. lollies, anything Chocolate. like that. Yeah. yeah. So tell me how you dealt with the, the tapping in the first place because there's some people who are learning these techniques and thinking this feels a bit silly or this feels a bit stupid. How did you overcome that? What, what happened for you on the first moments when you started using the tapping? Um, well, first of all, I was just really amazed at how well it worked um, in the first session. I can even remember um, thinking while we were doing the tapping that there was no way I was going to not have my cake and coffee that weekend because that's what I do when I go away. And, um, well, that's what I did. Um, and so I went out of that session thinking I'm still going to have that cake and coffee even though we've had done the tapping and then I went to the shop the next morning and we walked into the coffee club and I saw the big cake display and I just didn't want it and it hit me then how powerful the tapping really is because that was just one tapping session um, and we did it for sweets and carbs I just didn't want it mm -hmm. I could look at it and there was no connection there was no need for it I just had the coffee and, and enjoyed it mm. and does that mean you've never had another piece of cake again what, what does that really mean in that year and a half for you there were times when I did have cravings for other things like even fairly recently I had cravings for ice cream again um, and so sometimes I've had to really tap into the resistance because it is still a choice, it's up to, it was up to me whether um, I went with what I thought I wanted, which was outside of the three small meals or the healthy snack or food. Um, there were still times when I certainly did want or thought I wanted the greedy appetite for the chocolate or the ice cream. So it's still a choice whether you do the tapping and interrupt it or whether you just eat it. So, and there were times when I did just have it. So it was having to go back and actually tap into the resistance at times as well. Um, mm -hmm. And particularly for the exercise, um, I really had a big resistance to exercise. And mm -hmm. so tapping for resistance for exercise was really um, what moved me as well. And so when you first started, you were actually so large that your knees had become quite worn away and you'd, you'd ha actually had to have a, a double knee replacement and moving was just something you just didn't do because a it was too painful and b you mentioned to me that sometimes it was even too embarrassing to to just go outside and you were too embarrassed to be seen out walking it's too uncomfortable i couldn't move i just sat and watched tv mm -hmm. and so how did you start then? We did the tapping to remove the resistance to exercise yeah. and obviously we had the motivation to move your body and exercise program audio. Yeah. What then happened for you? We changed the language. We changed it from exercise because okay. I hated that E word Yeah. Um, and we changed it to move your body mm -hmm. and that was just such a change for me in attitude. And so I actually just started with walking around the lounge room and mm -hmm. just moving my body. It wasn't exercise anymore. It didn't mean in my head that I had to walk for 10 kilometres or I didn't have to go to the gym. Mm -hmm. um, and it just started to happen. 
a little bit more every day or I'd park the car a bit further away from wherever I was going mm -hmm. and and it was just thinking about moving my body it wasn't about exercise okay what happens now what does your week consist of now I go to the gym five or six times a week um, or I might five or six times a week into the gym and that includes swimming and aqua aerobics and if anybody had said to me 18 months ago that I would be even in a gym outfit, I would think they were mad. But I love it, um, particularly for my knees because I want to keep them as strong and healthy as I can. Um, I just love it and I'm toning up and getting to my goal and I just I feel the fittest and healthiest I mm. think I've ever been. And I mean, you've lost nearly 75, 77 kilos. And you look pretty toned and things. Why isn't there loads of excess fat? Why isn't there um, loads of stuff that needs to be, you know, what you see some people who've been incredibly large um, ending up having to have lots of excess skin cut away. What, what is it that you think has been the, the key? Maybe the exercise. From the beginning? Do you think just doing that little bit right from the beginning, strengthening the muscles has really helped? And what could you say to anyone else out there to inspire them, even if they've got five kilos to lose, or if they, they do have 60 or 70 or 30 kilos to lose? How could you, somebody who's been through it, who's done it, who's yo-yo dieted all their life until now, and you know, lost 30 kilos, gained 30 kilos, lost it and gained it again and again, and now this journey for you knows that something in the head has changed. Something in your head sees yourself as slim and healthy now. How could you inspire other people to help them? The secret's in the audio, so you've got to keep listening to the CD. Um, well, that's what's worked for me. I think it's changed my head because the battle's not in my head anymore. I don't have that emotional attachment to food, so the tapping has worked. Um, and it's just being persistent. Even 18 months down the track, I still listen to a CD almost every day. And I just choose which one. Um, and just be persistent. And if you need help, you ask for help. So, And how might you do that? Obviously, somebody's purchased the book or they're listening to the audios on the e-book the e and the downloads or they're listening to the DVD. How would you reach out to me, to Maggie Wilde, if you were, had, rather than you obviously saw me face to face as a client, how would you recommend that people reach out? Email info at the mind potentialist. And what's your experience of that as far as when, because in the beginning, you would have issues in between sessions or you'd need some to answer, ask some questions what was going on. Did you just email and, and I would send you back what to tap on and what to say? What, yes. what would happen for you and how did that work for you at home? When things were coming up and I was having issues, I'd just email you and um, you would email back and that would give me enough to work on until we saw each other again. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. And what do you think out of... If you look at all the CPR audios, if you look at the tapping, if you look at some of the other tools, even in the book where we talk about, you know, the um, the I'm gorgeous, you're gorgeous, the mirror work and all of the other work to interrupt those thought processes, even that internal discussion, the, the, uh, the inner coach work. What for you has been the key in changing your inner image? I'm thinking even, certainly the I'm gorgeous, you're gorgeous helped me to um, accept myself because that was a really big thing um, and that's only happened fairly recently um, and the inner coach, the inner coach I've probably only found in the last few months um, and so now because as I get closer to the goal things are getting tougher the weight's not coming off as quickly um, and I have been a little impatient here and there. Um, so the inner coach now at the moment is very powerful and pulls me up. And it's still a choice thing. I still have to 
even if I ask myself, well, how would the inner coach handle that? Or does, you know, I ask the inner coach if I need that food. Um, but the, yeah, the CDs are just fabulous. And even the, um, the self-doubt tapping audios, the little short ones, um, are fantastic. And it's just a matter of going with um, going with your gut and using what you think you need at the time. Absolutely. And there's no right and wrong thing. You don't have to use them in a sequence. It's just whatever you think you need, just use it. Um, and I absolutely love the cardio um, short five minute tapping, the build your confidence and um, I'm slim and healthy. Slim mm. and healthy. I get on the cross trainer and I just plug those in and put them on shuffle and just go for it. It's just fantastic. Mm. And what about the recent shift that you had in making choices? You finally clicked that it it wasn't about making choices from the head and the mouth anymore. It was about making food choices from the stomach yeah. and listening to just checking in with the stomach more. How has that changed your life? It has been unusual. Um, it's certainly not something that I've ever done because I've always eaten from my head all my emotions. Um, but it's amazing, like particularly even with the ice cream, um, because when the day that I really got it was when I absolutely wanted ice cream, large Baskin Robbins ice cream. And when I asked my stomach whether it wanted it, it was like, well no, it's grease and fat. So it's a matter of tuning in to what is healthy. And the stomach always chooses healthy. It doesn't choose the greasy, fatty um, foods. So it's been a release, a relief. And how do you feel right now, knowing that you are four or five kilos away from where you have always wanted to be for 30 odd years you've wanted to get here how does that feel to you it's amazing i just feel the healthiest and even the most beautiful that i think i have ever been because i've been 50 kilos up 50 kilos down three or four times and um, never had the um, belief that I would keep it off mm. but this time I am so absolutely sure it's off for the last time. Do you so believe in you? I do. I believe in you too. Thank you. Well done Trish.